Hello, VC, and hello, good people. Chris coming at you once again, your blues guy. Thanks a lot for coming back to Blues Guy Vinyl. Great to see you. Cheers. Yes, hot chocolate, because it's colder than a witch's elbow out here in Calgary, Alberta. It's uh, about minus 40 degrees Celsius with the wind chill tonight, so terrific. Absolutely terrific. But hey, winter in Canada. Speaking of winter, I've been putting off this video, or I haven't actually been putting it off. I just kind of got behind. I wanted to put this out last week um, in sort of in conjunction which, with what would have been Johnny Winter's 75th birthday. But be that as it may, I'm going to do it right now. So here we go. I'm going to talk a little bit about Mr. Johnny Winter. Uh, Johnny Winter was born in Beaumont, Texas, 1944. Yeah, excuse me. Cheers. I'm trying to warm up my insides. Uh, I just walked home from work, and like I said, it's really cold out there. So, Anyway, Johnny uh, grew up in Beaumont, Texas, and uh, you know he and his brother were introduced to music quite early. His brother, of course, being Edgar Winter. And I think it's because uh, both of them are albino. And they didn't really fit in with a lot of other kids, uh, you know, in their age group and stuff like that. They were kind of looked at as being weird or kind of freaks. So they kind of stuck to themselves a little bit. Um, and uh, as a result, they were, you know, kind of experimenting around with different sort of music because both of their parents were really into music. Both of their parents were musicians. Uh, their mother and father both played a variety of different instruments. But Johnny first learned to play the ukulele, actually, when he was about, I don't know, eight or nine years old or something like that. And by the time he was 12, he had taught himself to play guitar. And uh, two years after that, by the time he was 14 years old, he was already fronting his own group, along with his brother Edgar on uh, piano, and Johnny, of course, lead vocals and guitar. And they uh, cut a couple of records, and they were really quite popular in sort of the local uh, Beaumont and Austin, Texas sort of scene. Now, this group uh, that, he recorded, that he fronted and recorded with was um, called Johnny and the Jammers. Like I said, they had quite a few hits, and they were very popular in their local area. Uh, so much so that a couple of years later, uh, Johnny actually moved to Chicago in 1963 and decided to... Uh, you know, um, kind of head up there and uh, really immerse himself into the blues scene because really that's all Johnny was about. Johnny Winter was always uh, really into the blues. Ah, cheers, excuse me. Uh, so we hung around in Chicago for a little while, but, um, you know, he wasn't really, he didn't really um, sort of garner a lot of success for himself because, of course, as we all know by the the early to mid 60s, uh, the Chicago blues scene was already really running rampant. It was kind of already on its second or even third resurgence. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys up there already that were cutting heads, guys like Otis Rush and Buddy Guy, uh, Magic Sam, just to name a few, of course. So he got a little discouraged and he headed back down to Texas. And from there, he really honed his skills and really focused on nothing but the blues. And um, he recorded and released his first album, Johnny Winter, in 1969, 1968, 1969, somewhere in that neighborhood. Anyway, Johnny Winter on lead guitar and vocals, um, playing a little bit of harp, actually, blues harmonica, and a slide guitar, of course. Uncle John Turner on percussion and uh, Tommy Shannon on uh, electric bass. And that would sort of be the, um, the core fundamental foundations of Johnny's group over the years, was uh, these two guys, of course, with Johnny. And occasionally he'd bring his brother Edgar in to uh, play keyboards or organ or uh, piano or whatever. And um, he met with a lot more success. Uh, this album was a bit of a coup for Johnny because... By this time, he was already sort of running in a lot of the, the circles that his brother was, uh, Rick Derringer and so on. Uh, but with this album, he brought in Willie Dixon uh, and uh, Walter Shakey Horton to play some uh, harp phrasing as well. So this album was very well received by Johnny Winter fans 
and also a lot of blues fans, a lot of Texas blues purists and a lot of Chicago bluesmen. And a couple of years later, um, sort of riding on the wave of that success, he released Johnny Winter, Second Winter, with uh, his brother Edgar there. So you've got Johnny and Edgar. Uh, again, Edgar playing beautifully on keyboard and piano and supporting his brother. And uh, after that, he sort of started to dip his toe into the sort of the blues rock, uh, psychedelic and progressive rock kind of scene because uh, around this time we're talking uh, 69, 70, 71, kind of in that neighborhood. And that was kind of the big musical scene that was really starting to come up. And Johnny, always being the opportunist, wanted to kind of uh, throw, throw his hat in the ring, if you will, on, on um, this sort of musical style. And just blowing everybody away, of course, with his fantastic guitar work. I, mean, I think I've mentioned it here before that Johnny Winter wasn't um, a fancy guy in terms of a lot of uh, technical assistance, right? He didn't use whammy bars or st stomp boxes or pedals or anything like that. He would just plug right into his amp and he would just go. So any of the, the crazy sounds that you hear in any Johnny Winter recording is just Johnny and his guitar. Uh, the only time that he would do anything a little different was he would wear a slide on his pinky, whether it be a glass slide or um, a brass or stainless steel slide, depending on what sound he wanted. And that was really about it in terms of his, his sort of fancy technical equipment. It was his guitar, his amp, and a slide, and Johnny's immaculate ability. His playing has always been uh, very clean and very technically sound, but still rooted in that blues feel. He, uh, he felt what he was playing. He had a passion for the music. And I think because he had such a tough upbringing, again, being uh, albino, that um, he kind of lived the blues, you know? He didn't really fit in with white kids. He didn't really fit in with the black kids, the African-American kids. And, um, you know, so uh, he and his family, especially he and his brother, they were very close and they kind of stuck to themselves, right? So as I mentioned, he was sort of dabbling a little bit in the uh, progressive rock and that psychedelic scene. Um, and he was quite well received, but I think Johnny didn't really feel like that was his home. Um, he released a couple albums, this being one of them here, where um, he sort of was really playing a lot more of that kind of music and a lot more into that scene. And like I said, I guess he felt that it wasn't really his bag. So a couple years later, uh, he went back to blues. Um, he head back up to Chicago once again, and there he stayed for a couple of more years, and he did quite a bit of touring around um, in a lot of the uh, local blues clubs and blues festivals. And of course, by this time, he had already played Woodstock as well. So, you know, he was uh, really quite well known. He was kind of your guitarist's guitarist. If you wanted somebody who really knew how to play and you wanted to bring in a guy who could really... Uh, really shred, for lack of a better term, than Johnny was your man. Uh, so after he kind of dabbled around in some of that stuff, he went back into the blues scene and he, stick, he decided to stick strictly with blues. And uh, from then forward through the early to mid 70s, uh, into the late 70s and into the 80s, that's all he would release was blues albums, one after the other after the other. He stayed true to his blues roots after that see Johnny here with a beautiful national steel guitar. That's a great album, by the way. Johnny Winter, Nothing But the Blues. Already at this point, he's really well established. And he's basically, all of his blues albums, um, he's either um, covering blues standards or he's bluesifying, if that's even a term. I don't know. I just made it up. So there it is. He bluesified some, you know, basic rock stuff. Like, uh, he would play rock and roll with Jiku, but it was much more bluesy than Rick Derringer or any of the other guys were playing. And this album is a perfect example of that uh, because he's got stuff like TV Mama and Everybody's Blues and Drinking Blues, but and some uh, Muddy Water standards like Walking Through the Park and so on. And this is just a perfect example of how he, he stayed true to his blues roots.
Another great album, and this one I just picked up recently. Johnny Winter, Third Degree. Now, I've only got the five Johnny Winter albums. Four, five, five. I've only got the five Johnny Winter albums in my collection so far, and I'm, I'm trying to source out more and more of the Johnny Winter stuff through the early to mid-70s. Um, I really enjoy Johnny Winter. I'm a huge Johnny Winter fan, so... For me, it doesn't matter if the album is going to be more of the, the psychedelic or prog stuff or if it's going to be more of the bluesy stuff. If I come across any John, uh, any Johnny Winter stuff, I'm going to scoop it up. Um, I'm, again, I'm just a huge fan. And if anybody ever comes to me and says, Hey, Chris, you know, uh, who's one of your favorite blues guitarists? Like, Buddy Guy is my ult ultimate favorite. Uh, but I would say that Stevie Ray Vaughan and Johnny Winter are constantly duking it out for the number two position in, in my old mason jar because he's just an unbelievable player. Again, very technically sound, very clean, um, and known as having the fastest fingers in the blues. And the other thing that Johnny um, was quite well known for was uh, producing blues albums. He produced uh, four Muddy Waters albums, uh, two of which were nominated for Grammys. So, you know, Johnny Winter's no slouch when it comes to being in front of the mic or being behind the mixing board and uh, letting one of his blues idols and eventually somebody who became a very close friend of his, Muddy Waters, let that person shine as well. Now, Johnny stayed busy, like I mentioned, from the late 60s all the way through the 70s into the 80s, right up until he passed away just a, a couple of years ago. And um, he actually lived to be quite a ripe old age considering uh, he had albinoism because Generally speaking, the life expectancy of somebody who's an albino is, you know, is not going to be your sort of national average uh, 78 to 79 years old. But, uh, you know, Johnny was really up there. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that uh, he was really heavily involved in music. I mean, the day he died, he was playing in, I believe it was Sweden. And he died in his hotel a day or two after his final performance. He was performing a concert over in Europe. He was doing sort of a big whirlwind tour of Europe and the, and, uh, the Netherlands. And I, if I'm not mistaken, it was in Sweden that he played. And he, he passed away of uh, complications due to pneumonia. Now, Johnny, much like a lot of other very talented musicians, did wrestle with these personal demons that he had. He uh, had trouble with alcohol and a lot of heart drugs like heroin and cocaine. But much like a lot of his uh, contemporaries, such as Eric Clapton, he was able to kick that. And uh, as a result, he started living a healthier lifestyle. And I think that sort of contributed to his longevity. And um, he was one of those guys that his music didn't suffer, uh, whether he was... Uh, you know, hooked on the junk or whether he kicked the junk. Really, his music and his ability to play and, and uh, just his technical prowess never really seemed to suffer at all. And, uh, you know, he in the sort of in the 80s and early 90s, he bounced around a lot from label to label. He, he was having trouble finding a home. Uh, he was with uh, CBS for a while. He was with um, Alligator, actually, for, for quite a while. Uh, and he did some sort of... Uh, recordings and albums with some smaller labels out of Texas or out of uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, but I think it was really tough for Johnny to find a home in a lot of respects through the 80s, but he continued to tour. Um, he continued to headline shows and be part of blues packages. Uh, he went over to Europe and he'd play blues rock crowds, blues festivals, and um, he developed a very deep friendship, as I mentioned earlier, with uh, our main man, Mr. Muddy Waters here. And, of course, uh, Willie Dixon and um, uh, James Cotton, who he actually toured with. Uh, who That's who I saw Johnny Winter with here in Calgary was James Cotton. And uh, that was a fantastic duo, James Cotton being the former one of the former harp players for the Muddy Waters band. So you've got Johnny Winter, close association with Muddy Waters, and in turn that helped him to develop a friendship with James Cotton. And those two uh, did a couple of tours together, and they recorded a couple of albums together. I think it was two or three different albums, actually. One with, uh, I think two with Johnny Winter and James Cotton, and one or two of them with uh, Muddy Johnny and James Cotton. So there you go. You know, uh, Johnny Winter, just unbelievable, unbelievable blues artist. Um, definitely has uh, earned his keep in the blues legend. Um, he was the first Caucasian 
to be inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame. So he's, uh, he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as he well deserves to be, and he's in the Blues uh, Hall of Fame, the first Caucasian, the first white dude ever to be inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame. So that's pretty impressive. So a uh, pretty legit guy, Johnny Winter. Now, in the late 80s, Johnny Winter moved his home base to New York City, and that was basically where he was based out of until he passed a couple of years ago. And um, it's kind of funny, you know, because when I listen to Johnny Winter, I definitely hear that Texas blues, that Texas boogie-woogie sound that he's very famous for and that Texas itself is very famous for. He follows in the traditions of, you know, the Blind Lemon Jeffersons and uh, Lightning Hopkins, of T-Bone Walker, um, Stevie Ray Vaughan. And all these great Texas bluesmen, and Johnny Winter slides right in there, and you can definitely tell that there is that Texas boogie woogie sound in all of his playing. Whether he's playing more of the bluesy rock stuff, or whether he's sticking to the more of his straight traditional blues stuff. And um, I'm just a huge fan. I highly recommend if you haven't heard any Johnny Winter already, or if you haven't picked up any Johnny Winter for your collection, I would highly recommend uh, his first album for sure. Johnny Winter, self-titled. This one's in rough shape. I've had this album for, geez, I don't know, 15 or 20 years or so. It's still in great shape, but the cover, as you can see, has been well-loved, shall we say. But, you know, I would definitely recommend this album for sure, and also the aforementioned Nothing But The Blues. Uh, but, you know, you're, it's a pretty sure bet that if you see a Johnny Winter album out there and you scoop it up on a blind buy, you're not going to be disappointed. It's going to have a lot of great stuff. You know, if there's 12 songs on the album, um, it's pretty rare that any less than 10 out of the 12 will be great tracks. I mean, he's hardly got any fillers or garbage in any of his albums at all. Even some of the stuff that maybe isn't as strong, you know, some of the tracks that aren't as strong as others, they're still just great, straightforward, 12-bar uh, Texas blues and that boogie-woogie sound. Excuse me, one last sip of hot chocolate here, warm, warm the inside of my belly. Oh, that's good. So, that's going to do it here today for Blue Sky Vinyl. Uh, once again, thanks a lot for coming by. I really appreciate all the support. And if you haven't already, please like, share the video. And you know what? Do me a little favor. Subscribe. I would really enjoy it if you would subscribe to the channel and uh, spread the word. That would be great. And for those of you who have already, I really appreciate that. Uh, it's, it's great to see that the vinyl community is just a... Uh, tremendous bunch of people that support one another and it's uh, it's almost shocking to a new 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 fella like me a new guy you know to, to see all of the support it's really great so thank you once again and uh, until next time keep digging and keep spinning thanks a lot take care bye-bye